Hello, my name is Adam Brown. My name is Louis Shadler. And in this video, we will be covering overtraining, overreaching, and what the role of muscle glycogen is. Okay, so before we begin, just a brief outline of this video. First, we will define the terms overtraining and overreaching, and then we'll cover some of the symptoms of them and how muscle glycogen plays a role. Then we'll cover some research done on the topic and conclude with how to prevent overtraining and overreaching. Okay, so overtraining is when there is an accumulation of training or non-training stress and results in a long-term decrement in performance capacity with or without related physiological and psychological signs. This can take several weeks to several months to recover from. And now overreaching is kind of similar. It too is an accumulation of training or non-training stress, but only results in a short-term decrement in performance capacity with or without related physiological and psychological signs. And the recovery time for it is several days to several weeks. The symptoms of overtraining and overreaching are the same and are things such as a drop in athlete's performance, pain and soreness in the muscles used, decreased immunity, decreased training capacity, reduced maximal lactate from a lack of glucose breakdown, and finally, reduced maximal heart rate during exercise and an elevated resting heart rate. So this is where muscle glycogen comes in. One cause of these symptoms can be linked to a decrease in muscle glycogen. This is because without muscle glycogen present to be used for energy, we do not have a fuel source to use during exercise. And this ends up impairing performance, your recovery time, and if it is not replenished, it will end up affecting future training. So muscle glycogen is a stored form of glucose in our body that we get from consuming carbs. It is stored within the skeletal muscle throughout our body and is a multi-branch polysaccharide. It is our body's first and primary fuel source during exercise, which is then followed by liver glycogen and blood glucose. So one of the research articles we found was on a study that took 12 collegiate swimmers and increased their training load from 4,000 meters a day to 9,000 meters a day. Of the 12, four were not able to handle the training load and were labeled the non-responders. And they were compared to the other eight who were labeled the responders. Uh, the, non -resp the non responders tested post exercise had significantly reduced muscle glycogen levels. And this can be attributed to their diet because the non responders were consuming 3,631 calories a day, while the responders were consuming 4,682 calories a day. The training was estimated to have an energy expenditure of 4,500 calories. Um, in addition to not consuming enough calories overall, uh, the non-responders only consumed 5.3 grams per kilogram body weight of carbs compared to the 8.2 grams per kilogram body weight by the responders. Over, and then overall, the non-responders were consuming as low as 43% of the recommended 70% daily carb consumption. Uh, the results of this study were muscular power, sprint swimming, and swimming endurance of the non-responders was not affected by the increased training load and reduced muscle glycogen levels. And it was concluded that glycogen levels were high enough for the swimming tests, but not adequate for training. And then this ended up resulting in chronic fatigue that continued into overtraining and overreaching. So what exactly can we take away from this? We know that it's important to sustain adequate levels of muscle glycogen to maintain performance throughout exercise. And if we don't do this, chronic fatigue can arise, which often leads to overtraining and overreaching. 
To avoid this, it's best to consume around 70% of whatever amount of calories are required for someone. These calories should come from carbohydrates. Also, that you are taking enough time to rest and recover between workouts. Finally, it is never a good idea to train at high intensities consistently because overall it can just end up doing more damage than good to your body. So thank you all for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed.